Here we've got a very common problem. This is a rising main and this is made from lead. Uh, this was probably put in here maybe 80, 100 years ago, a long time ago. Uh, we've actually just come to do this kitchen and we've discovered that there's a leak just there, uh, just where the actual joint has been sweated onto the lead pipe and it's actually leaking quite badly. You can see the water on the floor down here. So we need to repair that. You can't actually sweat a lead joint now by law. So we're going to have to cut that off and we're going to have to put a lead lock connector on there and then hopefully we'll be able to pipe that up and it should stop it from leaking. You'll notice that there's no water dripping out of there at the minute. That's because I've isolated the water outside. So I'm now going to cut that off using an hacksaw. I'm going to cut a section of the lead pipe out and I'm going to take it to the plumber's versions to get the correct size lead lock fitting. So I'm now going to take that to the plumbers merchants and I'm going to get the correct size lead lock fitting to fit on the lead pipe. When you buy the lead lock, it's actually too small to fit over the pipe. It won't actually fit on there. So what I've done with this scrap piece is I've shaved it off using a Stanley knife to get it down to the correct size. And then the lead lock will actually now fit on there. If we take a look at the pipe that's sticking up here, you can see that the lead lock won't actually fit on there yet. So I need to shave some of that off using the Stanley knife to get it down to roughly that size. So it's a good idea to wear some cut proof gloves when you're doing this. And also it's a good idea to put something in the pipe to stop any lead shavings going in there. So I've put a piece of 10 mil pipe in there with a bit of tape on. That'll stop the majority of the lead shavings from going down the pipe. So now we can just start shaving the lead pipe until we get it to the correct diameter for the fitting. So I've now split the fitting and that's the thrust nut and we can see that that now fits on there well and it goes down far enough. And also if we take the body of the fitting itself we can just check that that fits on the top of there. So once you've tested the components to make sure they fit you can then put the fitting back together. So if we get the thrust nut that washer goes in that way and that's the grip washer and then the plastic washer goes that way and then on top of all that goes the o-ring so once we put that back together we can then screw the body of the lead lock into it so now all we need to do is push that on there till it's firmly on which is there we then just need to hold the body of the lead lock and then we can tighten the compression nut
and that is now very tight. So that's the lead lock part of the fitting done. So now all we need to do is pipe up to here using a piece of 15mm copper pipe and that's it, we can then turn the water back on at the stop tap. So I've now come up from the lead lock with some 15mm copper pipe to a stop tap to some more copper pipe. So we've now got the water back on in the property. Uh, you may notice that it's not completely straight that, but I'm not bothered about that. The important thing was I didn't want to move the lead pipe, so that's why it's like that. This is only a temporary measure. I have applied to United Utilities to have uh, an MDPE pipe put in. As soon as I get accepted onto the scheme, all this will be ripped out anyway, and we'll have a new MDPE pipe in the kitchen. So this has only been done temporarily really, just so that we can get water on for uh, mixing cement and, and things like that. So whenever you've been doing something like this, we've been shaving the lead off there, and we've been soldering up here, you need to give the pipes a good flush out for at least 10 minutes. So I'm now going to go and give the pipes a good flush before we uh, take any water from there. 